Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another out of theater review brought to you by Wade Watches. I'm Wade, and today I just got out of the Equalizer 3. I'm still in the movie theater parking lot, and I would like to tell you all that um, it's always wonderful when a movie that you didn't really have high hopes for uh, exceeded your expectations, um, because I didn't go into the Equalizer 3 with the highest expectations. Um, the first two Equalizer movies directed by Antoine Fuqua, and this is um, also directed by him and is supposedly at least the uh, final uh, int- installment in his uh, Equalizer film series. Um, the first two are a very enjoyable, passable action, action movies. They're not on the same level as just some, uh, John Wick or Mission Impossible, not at all. Um, and it's funny that this movie came out in the same year as both um, uh, John Wick Chapter 4, which is one of my favorite movies of the year, and also Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, which is also one of my favorite movies of the year, because both of those movies, uh, sheer action cinema perfection. Uh, so it was never the, on the same level as those movies. It was more just, you know, something that you could kind of, um, kick back and relax while you, while you watch, you know, um, Denzel Washington playing this, um, you know, very, very cool, sincere, nice guy who just so happens to be a deadly badass. Um, just, just something that you can like kind of turn your brain off, I'll turn your brain off to and just, uh, kick back and relax and watch um so yeah going into this one i was just kind of like you know here we go just more just more of that you know again here we go i'm just going into this for the novelty of denzel washington playing this uh really nice sweet guy who cares about people who can also like in your life in 30 seconds if you wanted to um and for the most part, for a good chunk of it, this movie actually surpassed my expectations. Um, out of all of the Equalizer movies, this one has the most engaging plot. Uh, it act- it definitely has um, some of the most engaging villains in the franchise, the most uh, memorable villains in the franchise, because uh, we are talking about the, Ita- the uh, Italian Mafia. Um and um in and in some parts it was actually uh quite heartfelt that being said th- this movie's main setback and i'm surprised to hear myself say this is that there's not a lot of uh there there's a huge lack and noticeable lack of action what we came to see there's there's a lack of denzel just beating the shit out of people and just like ending their lives in all sorts of gruesome and over the top ways don't get me wrong obviously that's in this movie we can't have an equalizer movie with denzel washington and not have him just ending people but it's not in this movie as much as one would think or as much as one would hope. And um, you guys know me. I'm not going to give away anything. But uh, I let's just say I could have used more of that. And I thought that... Um, it, this this movie is definitely a slow burn, more of a slow burn and a build up. It's more it's more similar to the first one. I feel like in the sequel, um, they just threw in like all these different subplots, so we could get like more of Denzel just beating the shit out of people and fighting, which is understandable because I guess that's what people can see. But with Equalizer two, I felt that there was a lack of a, a cohesive plot, and you know. Um, intimate character moments there was a lack of like emotional investment equalizer 2 because they went in favor of let's just see denzel just fight a bunch of people with equalizer 3 there's two there's an overabundance of slow slow burn and character moments in an hour and 49 minute movie so that's not a long time this is not like avengers endgame where we have a whole three hours so there's plenty of time for um talking character moments but also there's plenty of time for shit for shit to go down and for us to see the action that we want to see uh but this uh barely clocks in at two hours and for the majority of those two even hours you're just watching slow character moments and build up to a showdown that um doesn't really quite happen the way you want it to and that's all i'll say i feel like i've said enough already so wrapping it up i'm going to give the equalizer three a 6.5 
5 out of 10. So not terrible at all. Still has enjoyable moments. Still has badass moments. Uh, solid villain. And do I need to even... It's Denzel Washington, guys. You know he brings his A game. And he turns it up to 100 in a couple of scenes. But that doesn't uh, stop the fact that... That doesn't um, cancel the fact that... Uh, there's just not enough action in this movie. And as I was actually walking out, some people were saying the same thing. And one person said it's probably because of Denzel Washington's age, because of course he's up there now and he probably can't, there's only so much he can do. Maybe that was the reason why they decided to uh, go with a more slower route, but it's an equalizer movie guys. And, 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 you know, it's supposedly the last one of the uh, Denzel Washington equalizer movies directed by Antoine Fuqua. So not the finale I was hoping for, but I still had a decent enough time watching it. And, uh, once again, this is another movie I wholeheartedly, uh, recommend that you check out in either IMAX or Dolby Cinema just for the sound design alone. And, you know, just kind of, it takes place mostly in, uh, Italy. So just for, you know, the, um, set pieces and whatnot. So 6 point, 6.5 out of 10 for the equalizer three go out and see it just turn your brain off and enjoy those moments where denzel washington does throw down but uh don't go in expecting uh, another john wick chapter four all right this has been another edition of way watches and uh, another out of theater review and i will see you all next time peace